So here's today's project. I have two graphics cards. They're very similar, both EVGA Super Super Clocked Edition. Um, one is first generation, the other one's second generation. Uh, you can see right now this is the second card. It has met its power limit. And that makes it reduce the clock from uh, 1506 down to 1252, it would seem. I do have a pretty hefty overclock on this. Um, I'm doing some calculations. So here's the cards as I have them connected at the moment. Um, directly to this power supply with some extra fans to keep them cool. Uh, the one I'm going to be modifying is the one in the front here. It is a Best Buy Edition uh, card, the 3979 believe. So I'm going to shut this down and uh, pull the card out and show you what I do. So here's what we're going to be modifying on this particular board. It's the current sense resistors. They are 5 milliohms um, on this particular model. I think most NVIDIA cards um, use 5 milliohms for their current sense resistors. Um, this card uses two 6-pin uh, connectors. It does have the uh, connections there for an 8-pin, but they've only used a 6-pin. Uh, the resistors I have here are uh, 3 milliohms. A 10 milliohms and 4 milliohms. The idea is to trick the uh, controller on the board into thinking that it's passing less current than it actually is so you don't run into the uh, current limit. So I'm going to go ahead and try to desolder this here. I have a fairly hefty uh, soldering iron, 140 watt. Um, so I did hear that these are very well connected to some thick copper traces and can absorb quite a bit of heat. So I'm going to grab my tools here and set up and start filming. So here I'm all set up. Um, I've put some flux onto the resistors. I've got my uh, soldering iron ready to go. So go ahead and try to remove it and see what we get here. Okay, looks like we've reached our operating temperature here. Alright. Try this first to see if it takes up solder. Looks like that worked pretty well. Maybe not quite as well as I'd hoped. See if we can uh, remove it here by heating it up. It's not going too well. Okay, I'm trying it again here. Um, I had to change tips. The other one didn't have enough uh, mass to it to even touch these solder joints. So, trying it again. So, let's see what we get here. Just gonna wait for it to heat up.
Okay, so here's my soldering efforts after uh, switching to two soldering irons, uh, one for each side of the resistor there. Um, because of the amount of heat required to get the thing off of there, um, I decided to just go with the three milliohm resistors and see what I get for a result. So eh, there they are, R003. Uh, let's put it back in and make sure it still works. And after a little power modding adventure, I see exactly the behavior I want, which is uh, matching the first card. You can see here, you know, I've got my list of uh, benchmarks. This one's 314.303, and that's just the quick benchmark. Previously, this one was down in the, um, there we go, 200s. Now it's 314.306, so very close to my first card. So now let's see what the uh, clock does. I saw the power usage was about 70%, which is what the uh, first card reports as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. As you can see, both are reporting 62% uh, thereabouts. And both are locked at 1.506 gigahertz for the CPU or GPU and 3898 for the RAM. Double check my uh, settings here. Oh, I lost my uh, settings. Both identical for temps and everything. I want my priority here. I want to unlock these two. Set to about 80 degrees. There we go. That's fantastic, exactly what I was hoping for. Nice temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. Reported power draw of, uh, you know, 60 something percent for the one and 71 for my modified card both at the exact same clock. This is perfect. So now I'll be able to use them as a parent SLI and have no issues for gaming. Fun stuff.